What's going on out there, everybody? Today, I wanna to talk about how to make you look good on your next Zoom video. It's 2020, we're rolling into 2021, and what do you know it? Doesn't seem like anything's changing. You got doctor's appointments, you got business meetings, you got your next job interview, you got talking with your kid's teacher from school for your parent-teacher conference, all happening through Zoom meetings or other kinds of video conferences. But let's focus on how to make you look good on those videos. We've all been there. We're talking to somebody on a Zoom meeting and you just can't see their face because it's either really bright behind them and their face is dark or there's too much light on one part of their face and it's just a bright, bright light of light across their face. But I'm gonna to talk to you about three ways to make your Zoom videos look way better, as well as a couple of really inexpensive lighting ideas that may help as well. You can see in my studio setting, I have some practical lights is what we would call these lights that are sitting here in my background, but they're not overpowering. You really want to avoid bright lights behind you. I'm gonna take you around the house, We'll talk about these kind of situations and talk about how we can fix them and how we can use practical lights in your house, let's throw some personality in there and give it that flair it needs. And let's head out and I'm gonna show you how to look great on Zoom today. So the first place we'll tech out in my house is gonna be my kitchen. Um, as you can see, it's a bit of a disaster. This is like the doorway. We just got a package that's sitting on my counter. I've got dishes that need to be done, stuff I brought to my house. There's stuff in the pan over there. Um, this area is a little bit of a disaster also. I also don't have a lot for window light to be able to kind of help me out with any kind of lighting. So what I think I'm gonna do here is take this light first of all, because it's a pretty bright overhead fluorescent light and I'm gonna shut that off and I'm gonna pull a lamp and we're gonna set this area I think up for our space with our backdrop and something nice that we like. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is find something that, that says you. So I have this small area over here that we don't have as much clutter and stuff in, and I think I can use my island here and kind of set up so that my back is against this area. So bear with me, let's go grab some stuff and clean up our area, and we'll be right back here with our setup space for the Zoom call. I grabbed a couple of things so that we can set up our little backdrop over here. Now I think I got my framing pretty good. I'm gonna step back here and just watch how I set up the backdrop here. So let's go with that. Let me get this lamp on. Let's run the cord back here. Maybe just set back here in the background. I don't mind that. Might be nice to have a mug or two. Got this old antique tin. Maybe I'll scoot that back here too, put it between the two of these. Um, something like that. Look at this red pour over set. I think this will pop really nice. And then I'll put it just on a black mug. I feel like the red and black go pretty good together. So it's a little cluttered. Let's see how it looks. Yeah, that's not bad. I've turned off my overhead light and I just have this lamp. I'll show you the lamp. It's just a, I'm gonna shut it off real quick. It's gonna get real dark. So I have everything set up to auto exposure. So it's auto exposuring it. It's just a regular lamp, but it does have like a shade on it, which a shade is gonna act as a natural diffusion. So let me turn it back on so we get some light in here. And I have everything on my camera set up at auto exposure right now, just so that it will resemble what your computer or your phone's going to do if you're doing a Zoom call. But so for this lamp, it has some diffusion on it. If you don't have any kind of a lamp shade for your lamp, a piece of paper that you can get in front of it, like a white paper, printer paper, construction paper, it's gonna act for the diffusion for you. It's gonna keep it from being too harsh of a light on your face. If I take and I aim it right at me, that's not what you want. So this is it aimed right at me with no diffusion. But when I take and I aim it up so that it's utilizing this diffusion on it, it looks really nice. So like, what would you rather see on a Zoom call? This or me being like, hey, how's it going? It's good to talk to you today. My face isn't bright or anything, is it? <laughs> so best is to give yourself some diffusion, soften that light up a little bit and evenly distribute it on your face. So I've got a really nice even light on my face. It's nice, pleasant. There's a little bit going on behind me, but that's not the focus, but it gives you something that's telling you this room's not a complete disaster. All right, so let's head to the dining room and I'll show you what I have to work with in there. All right, so we're in the dining room. I've come to a time of the day where it's not very bright outside. Otherwise, I would say I would utilize these windows over here. They have, I have three good sized windows. And if you have daylight coming in, use those to help light you. 
and then decide, but don't light them from behind you because your face will not be seen because your camera's automatic exposure is going to want to expose for all that bright light coming in. So you don't want to do that. So what I have to work with in this room, first of all, let me show you this room because it is a bit of a disaster also. So I have this side of the room. My dining room table is kind of a mess and I've got this decent looking um, china cabinet behind me has a lot of fun stuff in it. It also has a light in it, which can be fun backdrop. So we'll kick that light on. Maybe we'll kick around with possibly utilizing this. So it's got a little light in it. If I turn off the main light in this room, which is a chandelier, that'll probably show up a lot better. So that's a possibility. We'll keep that in mind. I also have this whiskey table over here. Got a couple of nice paintings that a friend of mine has done for me. And my whiskey table, it's a kind of a mess too. I'm not really keeping up on it. With COVID and everything, we're not having a lot of visitors, so I haven't really been making it look presentable. I've got this area over here. The top of it's a little bit of a mess. It's from our travels and stuff, but it's kind of a nice little like wine center, um, our dinette. So there's some stuff I could do with that. But so let me tool around and I'll be right back with you guys with the setup I decided and I'll tell you a little bit about it. I have turned off my overhead light. I've got that same lamp in here with the shade. So I'm using it right behind the camera, giving me perfect, even lighting. Still using that shade on it. I think it's doing great for me. I'm gonna pull the camera a little closer to me. Um, I'm gonna adjust it down a little. So I like this angle on my face. What I've done behind me is I've gone with more of like a wine bar setup, um, put a wine bottle out, brought that same practical light in. Um, you could offset this too and kind of set off to the side and chat. And I think this looks nice. And then people see your stuff back there and they're kind of like, oh, that's pretty cool. Um, so however you want to do it, you want to keep your face in the right position. You want to keep the lighting in the right position. You want them to be able to see you. But as you can see, the practical light adds a little bit of fun. It also adds a glow to me if I go in the middle. So if I go in the middle, it's giving me a little bit of a backlight. I can pull my front light away farther to give me a different exposure. Um, but the point is, is that you're going to want to even across your face or a slight angle kind of gives it a really fun look. So to me, this is kind of neat. Um, it gives a little bit of a dramatic look. It's, it's up to you with more professional meetings and stuff though. You're going to want to even it out probably. If it's daylight, that's perfect because with these windows I have in here over to this side, I could put the lamp on this side and just utilize that daylight and kind of adjust it how, like adjust the lamp, how I want the contrast to be. Kind of a fun backdrop, play with that lighting, use a diffusion or something to filter your light through. Like parchment paper you use for cooking could be used easily as diffusion or just a piece of white paper or a sheet or a pillowcase or anything that you can put between you and your bright light. So play with it, play with your backdrops. Your backdrops are fun. All right, so see you guys in just a second in the studio where we'll talk about some of my more budget friendly lights that you can definitely use for Zoom calls and you don't have to go seeking for different lamps and stuff around your house and you can just be ready for your Zoom calls because we know they're going to keep coming. See you in just a second in the studio. I have two main lights that I'm using right now. One of them is my key light, which is a little more expensive. It's about 120 bucks. Um, I think you can get them for just under 100, but it's full RGB. It has all kinds of fun settings on it. I usually just use it as a key light, but sometimes I get fun with it. It has like a setting where you can make it look like a, a fire flickering, police lights, countless different options of things you can do with it, with those kind of settings. And I put a soft box on it. I will link it below and you can check it out. So it is a, a GVM um, 800D. It's a pretty cool light if you're gonna be doing video consistently. Um, my other light is only like 30 bucks and it fluctuates on Amazon here and there. Um, but it's a Viltrox and I'm going to grab that one right now and bring it over. So I have mine on a stand. So it's just a basic light stand. I do have this soft box that I actually made for it. Um, and I just used some foam board and a uh, piece of vinyl. I'm going to actually turn it around so you can see. Um, so on the back, you can push in on the button. So this turns it up or down. And then if I push in on the button again, you'll see that it flashes for the Kelvin. Um, so it goes from 5,600 all the way down to 3,300. It's not a huge fluctuation, but it matches most light setups that you need. 3,300 is almost tungsten. And then we go all the way up to like fluorescent 5,600. Um, so yeah, so this is a cool little light. It's a Viltrox 
uh, VL162T, and I will link that in the description below as well, so you guys check that out. If you enjoyed this video and you got some use out of it, please smash the like button and leave a comment telling me about what your thoughts were. And don't forget to subscribe because I'm coming out with video tips, tutorials, and product reviews weekly. We're making short films and stuff like that, things that are very entertaining and hopefully useful to you out there that needs to know different aspects of filmmaking or videography and things like that. So until next time, I'm going to keep grinding here at A Studios. Have a great day.